What is this? It's Top Gear. All we ever watch in Siberia is Top Gear. Where is the other one? The idiot. Last I heard, he got run over by T-34 tank. I believe he is some kind of deviant. Can you watch Doctor Who? No. But it's about the Cold War. No. It's by the guy who wrote Victory of the Daleks. I hated that one. I liked Victory of the Daleks. Shut up. Okay, to start, I want to sum up my feelings about the first two episodes. The Bells of St. John, despite being incredibly formulaic and slightly predictable, uh, it was nicely paced, full of giddy set pieces and a belting episode. 8 out of 10. The Rings of Azkaban. Charming, heartwarming and musically lush. Full of T. Davis era hallmarks. Brillo. 9 out of 10. So, if it's not perfectly clear, I've loved this series so far. Assuming that 8 and above are the quantifiable values of love. Series 7 Part 1 had its low points and it was a bit of a disappointment all round for me. Like except for Rory's dad Brian. And it's been such a long while since I've liked three episodes in a row. Yes, I did just say I like this episode. Shush and listen. While none of these recent episodes have been flawless, although I can't really think of an episode since the 11th hour that's really been that flawless, they've all been immensely satisfying and absolutely jam-packed with jam story and jam plot and and jam. Sorry, that metaphor got away with me a little bit there. I really want some jam. Anyway, before we begin, you may have already guessed that from my Power of 3 review, I don't really like giving things a score out of 10. I don't really like the idea that you can assign an arbitrary value on an episode based on how much you like it. It's just a really inelegant form of critique. Although I know some of you will just be watching this, just so you know what I think in an easy to handle number. So... And for everyone else, here's what I thought. First off, I just want to throw my hands up and say that I've never really had a problem with any of Mark Gatiss' episodes in the past. He's a, he's a pretty off-the-wall writer, as you can probably tell if you saw that comedy show that he did, or, or ever heard any of his big Finnish audios or read any of his books or anything like that. One of his hallmarks is to use historical cues and people from history to riff off, which sadly this episode was just lacking in entirely, unless you count the Cold War itself as a historical cue. But it's not like that was particularly explored in depth beyond, oh, if we fire a nuclear bomb, will it explode and result in mutually extreme destruction? And that's a bad thing. Oh, it's the Cold War. It this episode certainly wasn't the best in that regard. Instead of riffing off on those historical cues, it seemed to be riffing off a lot more on Rob Shearman's Dalek. In fact, it even steals a number of the visual motifs. We see the Dalek and the Ice Warrior in chains. We see the Dalek and the Ice Warrior escape. We see the Dalek and the Ice Warrior kill all of the crew or all the people in the base. Uh, we see the Dalek and the Ice Warrior unmask or unshell itself to see the hideous lizard or mutant inside. Though thematically the film felt it was riffing more off bottle horror films. That's horror films where there's people trapped in an enclosed location and there's a monster out to get them. Which arguably, in the end, was one of its greatest strengths and lent well to the reinterpretation of the Ice Warriors, making them seem less of a hulking, bumbling, fat bloke in a suit and seem a lot more like a sleek, quick, utterly threatening menace. The scenes where we only see glimpses of the Ice Warrior and its claws. Absolutely perfect spot on and incredibly evocative, again, of classic horror films where we only really ever see glimpses of the monster, which really amps up the tension. Although part of this tension was sadly lost where we see its head. But I'll talk more about what I thought about that later. Continuing in the horror vein, some truly inspired casting as a stalwart veteran of horror and one of my all-time favourite actors, David Warner was pulled in to chew every single inch of scenery he could get his teeth on. Though utterly tragically in Cold War, his presence seems a little bit 
like set dressing, serving little purpose beyond being the scientist on the Russian expedition, and as a comic foil for a, a series of crowbarred in 80s new wave gags. Yes, we know it's the 80s, there was a great big title in the middle of the ocean, in the opening shot of the episode, you don't need to remind us. But it's really tragic that one of my least favourite writers of the series, I'm really sorry about this Chris, Chris Chibnall, can still absolutely nail the writing in regards to supporting characters as he did with Rory's dad Brian in the first half of the series. But in Gatiss' episode the supporting characters feel a bit clunky and awkward. Case in point, the Russian soldier at the start of the episode who breaks the ice warrior out of the ice. Why? Why would anyone in their right mind sabotage an archaeological find like that? Why? 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 Well, it means that he releases the ice warrior. But why? This leads to the biggest flaw in the episode, a lack of direction. We're thrown ultravox and autopsies, but no real resolution. Gates' stories usually have a strong grasp of their own mechanics and at least come to a concrete conclusion. But it seems to have just got lost in this one. Doctor argues with the Ice Warrior, his Ice Warrior friends turn up, the world's still under threat, Clara sings a song, and hey presto, the world saved! It feels a bit like this episode just wasn't edited properly in both the writer's room and the editing room. With the ambiance and the Ice Warrior taking centre stage and the plot and characterisation suffering as a result. The Submarine 2 suffers a little bit from the chosen direction. Though the choice of shots is often sumptuous, showing off with great detail and relish, there were times it just didn't gel properly. And the sense of claustrophobia and being boxed into a little submarine, it was just lost. And, and it felt at times like we were looking at a set from The Crystal Maze. The direction and cinematography felt more at home in TV drama than they did in a claustrophobic submarine film or a moody horror film at times. Though there were some really, really great standout moments. For instance, the shot where we see the chained ice warrior with Clara approaching tentatively. Or the exceptionally tight shot where the doctor finds the eviscerated corpses of the crew. It felt like it was showing just enough without being too gratuitous and it really felt like something out of John Carpenter's The Thing. Back to the submarine anyway, one tiny little problem I had with it. It could have been a little bit more... Russian? Granted, I've never been on a Cold War era Russian submarine before, but between the lack of obvious decor and the massive wasted opportunity of not getting the cast to do their best, worst, most dubious Russian accents, I felt a bit shortchanged. The pièce de résistance of this episode, of course, was the Ice Warrior itself. Skaldak was absolutely fabulous. Except, again, when he showed his head off, that just looked a bit like CG. Between hulking around the submarine like a big, muscular, green, bipedal Dalek, and stalking the crew like a reptilian, gigeresque alien, I was absolutely transfixed. I can really understand what Stephen Moffat said of the original Ice Warriors when he said that they were the epitome of a, a bit of a naff Doctor Who monster. And for those of you who didn't like it, you're crazy! It's not like you've got a massive sentimental attachment to them anyway! Not unless you've watched all of the classic series episodes and only one person have done that, and that's Jamie Carroll. And there's a very, very slim chance that you're Jamie Carroll and a very, very big chance that you're not Jamie Carroll, so shush. I just, I just can't wait for the fans' reaction to next series, Classic Who Monster Reveal. <laughs> Take home message, the Cold War, cracking episode, full of faults, what episode isn't, 2 pi out of 10, Richard B, signing off. <laughs> <laughs>